Digital Middleware Friday, episode 41, November 17, 2017. Leverage the Vision API OCR capability with Azure Functions and Flow. So in this episode, I'm gonna talk about the Computer Vision API in Azure that has a optical character recognition capability um, within it. Um, and this will be combined with, or I'm gonna wrap a function around that capability by pushing MC to it um, using also Flow. And what we also talk about in this episode is within the community corner about a blog post created by Sandro Pereira in the past, also around um, leveraging OCR uh, using Logic Apps, Azure Functions, and Power BI. So during Integrate, there was this notion about personas. So for instance, Ken in his talk talked about personas um, with regards to, to flow and bots. And I like to talk about the persona a bit as well. So what about, you know, consultant? Is that kind of an ad hoc integrator? Um, you know, as a consultant, I, I provide advice to, to customers uh, around um, integration technologies in Azure, um, which could mean that I could talk up to um, end users saying, hey, you could use Flow to do integrations. Or I can talk to people that are more um, IT savvy and tech savvy and say, hey, you can leverage the, the Azure capabilities, including Service Bus, um, Event Grid, Cognitive Cert, etc. So as this consultant, this persona ad hoc integrator or synergy integrator or a combination of it, you provide advice, you perform proof of concepts, uh, you code in Visual Studio and or the Azure portal. Um, you love to build APIs or functions, so you do a little bit of coding and, and, and building those type of, of solutions as well. Or you do advice and say, hey, I want to reduce your cost in your IT service department. You know, this is kind of a diverse role or persona, as you could say. Okay, let's dive into some of the technology. So let's talk a little bit about Flow. So Flow was kind of also one of the topics during uh, Integrate US, um, but also Integrate London. So you kind of, what is Flow if you never heard about it? If you first time look at Middleware Friday, you know, Microsoft Flow really helps the non-technical people to kind of automate all kinds of processes within their Office 365 environment, basically. So to enable them to be more productive or you know making them more smarter in a certain way so they can kind of create notifications when um, an email comes in uh, they could copy files from let's say a google drive to OneDrive. so this is something i demonstrated in the mineral friday shows in the past collect data data so you can push data to let's say sharepoint online or in your business process you automate the approvals so there's all kind of things you could do with microsoft flow so during Integrate also, for instance, Anjali, which is uh, one of the uh, product group uh, people within uh, the Microsoft product group flow, she kind of said, hey, you know, integration spans the complete enterprise. And I kind of agree. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's everywhere, basically, um, where you can think about integrating stuff. And why would you always limit that or provide that to or give that to the uh, IT department and developers saying, hey, guys, create a creation format. Why not? If it's pretty simple and easy, why not? lower that burial and provide a service or capability in, in this case that's microsoft cloud and give them flow so they kind of you know self-service it's self-service capability you're know, creating your own um, little automations within your organization instead of you know for every type of little integration you need to go to the it department so the it department can say okay here's some connectivity to let's say storage or other services which you allowed to access and then you kind of automate your own um, tasks for instance if necessary so this could be really useful for for in this case end users or if you're talking personas it would be more the uh, citizen integrator and then on the other hand and this falls definitely under the realm of the pro integrator and developer you got this notion of functions so in a nutshell functions have in and outputs so inputs could be events and messages um, generated by uh, other services within Azure, or let's say you uh, push a request message to a function and it will result back. So a function is no more or no less a piece of code that runs within Azure. So it's, it runs in a function app which sits on top of an app server. It's kind of managed for you by Microsoft. You kind of could provide a, a different SKU if you want to, you can have it run as a consumption model. So it's pay as you go, or you can provision set of uh, have a set of dedicated hardware for it, but it kind of runs um, in Azure. 
it's kind of what what's been called serverless computing. So you can have something processed in Azure in a function based upon the input you provide to it. And then it also provides outputs for you, uh, being if it's an HP trigger, you get a response back. But you can also push um, that result towards, let's say, a queue, which we'll demonstrate later. So you can have multiple in and outputs for a function. So kind of a nutshell is something that a pro integrator or a developer would do because it involves code. And a code in for, for um, a function could be C-sharp, F-sharp, Node.js, or recently even Java has been added as language support for um, Azure Functions. And then you have the cognitive services, and this could be leveraged uh, also through um, logic apps, through a function, or in, and even in Flow. So it's different personas could work with uh, cognitive services. But the cognitive services um, have a few, um, let's say, pillars or buckets. Um, you got vision, speech, language, you got knowledge and search. And within that, um, concepts of vision, speech, you have you know different AP types of APIs. So in Azure, you can go to the portal and you can provision a cognitive service and choose one of the APIs and use, leverage them based on a certain SKU. So you have the free one, you can only use in a certain amount, but if you need more, leverage the service more, have more requests to sent towards that service, then you have to provide a different SKU. So you have this notion of, of a vision API. So that's one of the, 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 let's say, pillars or buckets within cognitive services. And that provides the computer vision API, the face API, emotion and video. So face API, for instance, is something that also is being demonstrated in one of the previous Middle Earth Friday shows. Here we're gonna focus more on the computer vision API, which enables you to send up a picture and have an analyzed or even a receipt or scan, uh, which I'll demonstrate later on. So that's one of the services and capabilities you can use. And it will score, for instance, uh, what you provide if it's a picture or it will detect kind of the uh, characters. And that's when you look at the OCR capability. So in general, when you want to access an API um, generated in Cognizant, when you, when you choose, for instance, the computer vision API, once that's provisioned and you've chosen the certain SKU you want to use based on your workloads, then you can get that API subscription key, or you can also get it through Microsoft.com slash Cognitive. But you need that key once you call one of the RESTful endpoints of that service. So if it's computer vision, then you post location, location where the region where you provision that service, API Cognitive Microsoft Com Vision slash version one OCR and then a query string. And also you paste in its um, that API in a special header. So I will show you that in a minute in that demo, but that's kind of how you access uh, the API in general or the OCR type of one in particular for computer vision. So in the demo, I kind of submit a receipt of a parking. So a parking receipt, so I park my car somewhere and I have to pay for it in the end. But I want to expense this because it was business related when I parked my car. Then um, through Mike's flow, which I can also use on my phone, I push that receipt towards Azure Blob Storage. And with an Azure Blob Storage, an event gets created because I put, uh, enabled event grid in it, in an, or it's in, enabled there, but I kind of set up a subscription for a function when a blob is being created. So the blob created event is something I want to subscribe on through event grid, get that event message, which contains the location, the URL of that receipt and push that or the download that content of that receipt and push that to the endpoint I just showed you of the computer vision APIs and then leverage that uh, optical character recognition capability that's in there. And the output I subsequently push out to a service bus. The function will get, uh, return a 200 OK, but it's just HTTP uh, response, but the outcome is pushed to the service bus. So this is my flow environment. So here I have created a flow, a simple button click, where um, I select a file, and then I push a button that's what's to be mimicked. So this is the parking receipt, and I run it. So it's basically when I push the button, once I selected that receipt, it get pushed towards as a storage. So here, let me hit refresh. And here you see that parking received um, present. And this will generate that blob created event on which that function subscribes on. 
So let me just move over to the subscription first. So here you see this is event grid within my um, blob storage environment. Here's the endpoint URL of my function. And here you see that it kind of subscribes on the blob created events. Here you have a pre-filter, prefix filter set. So this is on that container where the image arrives. And this is the suffix that I kind of, hey, I want to subscribe on the Apex. So if you want to know a little bit more about the event grid, definitely go to the middle of Friday session on event grid. Then we go over to the function. So this is the uh, monitor tab of the function. Let me refresh it. And you see a minute ago, that event came in. So I've some, hopefully I selected that one. But here you see the event type block created because the event message adheres to the schema which has certain elements in it. So topic, event type, which is the block created, event time, an ID, and then the data itself around that event. So there's a data, and then you can see here, and this is important, also that URL. So let's go over to the function and explain that a little bit more. So the request comes in. I'll get the content out of it, and then I kind of want to have that URL image, or um, the, the URL of that image being in the blob storage and that url eventually i'll pass on to the analyze image function right here or method so the file location comes in here here you can see that you know we kind of start creating a request including a header which is that special key or at least the api key with this header here you see the query string variables or parameters so the language and detection this is the endpoint the query string and then of course here you see where that file location is necessary because we kind of need to have that content pushed towards that endpoint so the way it looks and this is what you can mimic and how it would work is in the cognitive service computer vision is where and this is the a tab where you can try different stuff but here you can see that OCR capability so I this is that received I pushed uh, to Azure Blob Storage, but you see it right here. And I've analyzed it, and this is what you kind of see in text. And this is the JSON being put out. The JSON, which you can also, if I go flip back to the monitor tab, and just click one of those, and then you also see here that JSON. And this is being outputted by the function towards, and I'll just click on integrate here to show you the output to that service bus. So here's that configure. So I can have multiple in and outputs, which I can configure for a function. And you can see that right here. So if I flip over to Service Bus 360 and then to that queue where that message needs to go to, or being pushed out to, that's the output, then here you see that message. So I'll just click details. And here you see that JSON again. So this is kind of in a nutshell how my demo works so here again you have the event grid this is the uh, the function and this kind of mimics what um, the computer vision api does so this in total is the demo so here you see me leverage as a pro integrator citizen integrator and uh, using microsoft flow some of the azure services like blob event grid but it really evolves around you know the function and the computer vision api and the function kind of sits on top of that uh, api because you kind of have to give them the workload, process it, and then, you know, push that workload forward to the service bus um, in this particular example. So this is a part of an integration. Let's say that, you know, further on, that mesh is being picked up by the service bus, for instance, via Logic App, and then it interprets the, the output, and then, for instance, sends it over to uh, an ERP system that kind of will uh, see to it that I can reimburse in the end. So this is a pretty uh, interesting um, a use case for uh, some of the uh, technologies you can find in Azure, whether or in the Microsoft Cloud, uh, considering Microsoft Flow. Now, I'm not the first one that kind of demonstrates this um, Computer Vision Man API OCR with some of the um, Azure Pro integration capabilities that are out there in Azure, the, the logic apps and function, etc. Sam has done it as well. So during um, Tuga IT in Portugal, so in May, he showed, uh, showed us this 
is when you know we uh, present uh, during that event then people fill out evaluation forms and those eva evaluation forms you kind of want to score and have a little bit of visualization around it. so he scans those and the scan gets to the OCR they recognizes it the, the patterns or the scores and the scores and eventually are being pushed to Power BI to do kind of visualization show what people thought about the um, the speaker itself. So there's a really pretty neat uh, solution he uh, he created and he showed us that during a Tubo IT. But he also created a blog post around it. So it's a little bit, um, well, I wouldn't say old. It's 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 created a few months back, but it's still relevant. It really shows you the power of of logic apps, functions, OCR, and it's really an interesting solution he's built and he's written that down. So definitely have a look at that one as well. Okay, if you got any feedback around, um, you know, the shows me and Ken are providing for you guys, please keep that coming and please tell us uh, either for Mirror Friday at gmail.com what you uh, guys want us to talk about, you know, in the future, if there's certain topics you want us to talk about or give us opinions and views through uh, these episodes, then please do contact us. Then I'd like to thank Bishop 360 again for being a great host and enabling us to to really put out that content out for you guys um, so you can watch this stuff. So good job, thanks guys. And I will leave you with the musical credits.